This week, on Days of Our Pirates, the Pirates look to finish the rest of the series against the worst team from a win-to-loss standpoint in the entirety of the MLB in the Arizona Diamondbacks. They're playing in Arizona, and they lost the first game 4-2. to And even though the Pirates are favored in all of these games because they are somehow better than another N MLB team, they... It's, you know, they lost one game. It shouldn't... They should win this game and next game, right? Because they just beat the Mets. Like, they're coming off of an all-star break where they played so well. And they're playing the worst team in the league. This should be easy. They should be preying on teams like the Diamondbacks. But we'll have to see. As right here, Adam Frazier gets the pop-up out. Key Brian Hayes, he launches one, except it is another out right to the center fielder. He has been getting some good action early today. And John Domgowski to the center fielder again. And that is the end of the first inning as we go to the bottom of the first. As right here, pitching for the Pirates today is M Max Kranich. And he's pitched a few times this season, but... He hasn't blown my mind this year, just like every other player on this Pirates team, just about other than Adam Frazier, Brian Reynolds, and Key Brian Hayes. But that's not the point. You know, the Pirates, they're, if they continue to play the way they've been playing, regardless of what happened last game, they, ca they can make a playoff push. It's very unlikely, but it is possible. And it could give us optimism for Ben Charrington and the future of this baseball team. As right here, it is going to be another pop up and an out as <laughs> you get the out right here as you go to the top of the second inning Jacob Stallings he had a grand slam against the New York Mets and right here it stays in the ballpark for the out so close but yet so far just like this Pirates organization as a whole and if the Pirates fail to win at least one of these next two games but in my opinion both but you know, for sake of argument, one of the next two against the worst team in the league, then that means that they're open to losing to any team in Major League Baseball at any time. And that's not good news. They're so inconsistent. It's incredible. As here, Jared Olivia is up. He's been playing decent, and he continues that run as he gets a single right here, as that's going to be the second base hit, excuse me, the first base hit, but the second man on base in the ball game for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Two outs and in on third and first. Let's see what the Pirates can do with this inning as Jared Olivia's family is very excited. And they do nothing. Oh no, they score a run. That's crazy, man. They scored a run. How surprising. But it's against the worst team in baseball, so it comes with a discount. As right here, we're looking to be the true Pittsburgh Pirates as once again, right here, the Arizona Diamondbacks score a run. And it isn't an away game for the Diamondbacks, which means that they do have a chance considering they're playing the Pittsburgh Pirates. But man, the Pirates, in my opinion, have the worst roster. But the worst team is the Diamondbacks, so we should be winning these games. I mean, it should not be one-to-one, -one, but it's early in the game. Who am I kidding? You know, the days of our Pirates, it's not a functional organization, but it is good content for you two, and that's what we're here for, folks. As right here with a man on second and one out Reynolds just pops it up and it's going to be an out that's a great play as he is Frazier is going to third base and he is going to be safe so a man on third with two outs in a one-to-one -one ball game and here comes Nengowski and oh he steals a run what an amazing play by the Diamondbacks credit to them that was not the Pirates fault that was all the Arizona Diamondbacks as it seems like they decide to look like the New York Yankees and all of a sudden Brian Escobar he decides that he's just gonna look like a Golden Glove award winner and it's not very ironic that he does that against the Pittsburgh Pirates but hardly any other teams ever throughout the rest of the season as it's a fair ball Polanco just gives it a throw back into the field to Adam Frazier as that drives in another run for the Arizona Diamondbacks and they are celebrating because winning two games in a row for either of these teams is a rare occurrence unless if it's before the all-star break and you are the Pittsburgh Pirates so they'll take anything that they can get right here but remember this is a tank off whoever loses wins except they have to continue to lose they can't be inconsistent with losing they just have to lose as right here it's a fair ball and Ryan Escobar returns back to normal as right here the Pirates 
he is safe and he the pirates are going to take a three to two lead off of the error by escobar so he robbed them of a run earlier and now he get gr granted them two and that's very fortunate for the pirates as it is three to two at the bottom of the fourth inning and right here it is crushed and polanco doesn't catch it it was somewhat of a hard play so i don't necessarily blame him but that's going to drive in runs right here as the diamondbacks capitalized on polanco just barely missing it as we go to the top of the seventh inning it is three to four bases loaded for the pirates one out prime opportunity to get back the lead all they need is a single and then galski gets walked as right here it is a four to four ball game and the pirates are fortunate off of their incredible luck against the Diamondback so far is right here it's a double play and it is four to four but the Pirates gonna run and as long as the bullpen doesn't blow it as long as they don't blow it then we should be good because we've been hitting better than them this game and oh my gosh not again if this bullpen does this against the Arizona Diamondbacks, the worst team in the entirety of Major League Baseball, then how do they expect to win any games? Is a game really safe if they're losing and they constantly are blowing leads in such wide levels against the worst team in baseball? That's another home run. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? It was just 4-4. Four to four. But all of a sudden, our bullpen decides to take their true form. And if we can't hold a one lead out of three games against the Arizona Diamondbacks, the worst team in baseball, then that means that any team we play for the rest of the season, the game isn't over. It doesn't matter what the score is. You saw that against the Indians when they were up 11-2 to and then won 11-10. to No lead is safe if that lead is held by the Pittsburgh Pirates. And that is being proven right now. It's so frustrating. It's so frustrating. I understand, you know... They're not the biggest market in the world, but Bob Nutting doesn't even try to re-sign players, and he better start because Ben Sherrington, I believe, is trying his absolute best to push this organization in the right direction as a general manager, but this needs to stop. Right here at the top of the ninth inning, key Brian Hayes, and it is going to be an out as the Diamondbacks win 6-4, to four, and the Pirates give up another lead, just proving why there is a soap opera named after them, and it's very deserving. Days of our Pirates? Like I said in episode 1, does that sound like a functional organization to you? <laughs> the answer is no, and anyone would agree with me on that one. As right here, the Pirates and Gamble is safe. It looked like they were going to get a double play, but they don't. They only get one out, as it's 2-1 at the top of the 5th inning, and now it's 3-1. So Key Brown Hayes goes to the bench, and then Gowski launches one, and that one is gone. John Dengowski gets a two-run homer to make it 5-1 to one Pirates, and it looks like they're going to avoid getting swept unless if their bullpen does what they usually do. But wait, do you remember what I said earlier about them not being able to hold a lead against the Diamondbacks and how that means that they're open to choking a lead against any team the rest of the season, no matter how large the lead is. That theory is going to get tested today. And as you'll see earlier, I may be right and I may be wrong. Remember, this is the worst team in the league when it comes to win to loss ratio. Keep in mind. So this is the easiest competition they're going to get. As right here, the Diamondbacks score another run with one out, bases loaded. It's still 5-2 Pirates. Tyler Anderson who may or may not get traded the trade deadline right here as it is an out and it's a double play and the pirates are able to avoid a bullet against the diamondbacks right here as right here we're going to get another base hit for the diamondbacks in the bottom of the sixth inning and that's going to drive in a run as right here the arizona diamondbacks refuse to give up and they are preying on their weak competition, even though they're better than them from a win to loss ratio standpoint. Bottom of the seventh right here, Clay Holmes. He is the man who is in the bullpen right now. And the Brian Reynolds just waits for the ball to come back to him. He's going, he's rounding third base, and he is safe. There was no chance in him being out on that play, as this is once again a baseball game. And it proves that no lead is safe. It, whenever your lead is held by the Pittsburgh Pirates. This bullpen is atrocious. 
I understand, it happens sometimes, but it happens a ton here in the Steel City, and that is something that you, you just hate to see it. Like, it's so utterly embarrassing, and it's happened for the past four years. And we're still, it's like we're watching the same movie on repeat as what an amazing play by Ben Gamble. I know, we're trying to have all the negativity right now. That was an amazing play. I mean, perfect timing, the jump, the catch, everything, and he didn't fall down. Like, he slipped, but he didn't fall down. So that is an, that's an amazing play by Ben Gamble. Props to him on that one. But right here, the Diamondbacks are able to shoot up the gap as they drive in another run. Maybe even two, as right here... The Diamondbacks. Oh, man. This is getting ugly right now. As, oh, he can't hold on to the ball. And that's another run for the Diamondbacks. Ben Gamble is just, he's stunned right now. I mean, he is in a hopeless position. He just made an amazing play, and his team, his pitchers, keep choking it. I'm sorry, Ben Gamble, Brian Reynolds, and Keith Brian Hayes. I'm sorry, Jacob Stallings, whenever you hit Grand Slams. And... I'm just sorry to anyone who ever has a good performance on this organization because it hardly ever matters and that's the hard truth as right here the Diamondbacks are going to get even more runs wow Pirates are up five to one like two minutes and 30 seconds worth of video time before and now at the top of the ninth <laughs> they're gonna win the Diamondbacks are gonna win they're gonna, the Pirates just got swept by the Arizona Diamondbacks, the worst team in the league, and they blew leads in all three of the games, especially the last two. It just proves how this team doesn't matter what the size of their lead is and what team they're playing or where they're playing. Their lead is always open to be compensated, and that's something that is very hard to see as we go into the next series against the best team in baseball from a win-to-loss ratio, and Polanco's hitting home runs. Are you kidding me? We just got swept by the Diamondbacks, and here we are, and all out of all people hitting home runs, it's the highest play paid player with the second worst batting average of the entire team hitting a home run. Wow. They won 6-4, to four, and then they blew out the next game 10-2. to two. This is what I mean. If they play half as well against the Diamondbacks, they win the game. They win all three of those games. They beat the Giants, the best team in the league from a win loss ratio. This is just to be expected with this Pirates organization, and no one cares? No one. Only Ben Sherrington cares about this situation. Bob Nutting certainly doesn't care. As long as he's filling up the seats to half capacity, he doesn't seem to give a crap. And that's so sad. Our owner is so cheap, and it's really showing with our baseball team. We were making the playoffs, and we had a stacked roster, and now all of a sudden we have a depleted roster of a couple of young stars who I'm scared will be traded or released out of town or just their contracts conveniently expire, and we're going nowhere. I mean, if you're going to lose against the Diamondbacks in a tanking session, you might as well lose against the Giants. Heck, you might not even have to try to tank against the Giants because they're the best team in Major League Baseball when it comes to their amount of wins compared to their amount of losses, but you beat them twice. And the second time, very convincingly, 10-2 to two, in San Francisco. You lost the last game, but you won the series overall after getting swept and blowing leads to the worst team in the MLB? Jeez. And just like the Pirates' inconsistency, always never shocking me. So are the days of our Pirates.